First, I would like to thank you, uh, Dr. Saad, for this nice introduction. Uh, really, I'm so proud uh, when you choose me to, uh, to be a moderator uh, today in one of the most hot webinars uh, discussing a really challenging topic uh, by uh, our uh, eminent expertise and knowledgeable professors. Uh, uh, regarding pulmonary embolism, uh, we could say uh, it's a, the silent killer in ICU. And uh, it's considered the third uh, common cause of, uh, of death and mortality from cardiovascular diseases. But with uh, rapid diagnosis, high index of suspicious, rapid treatment, we could significantly reduce this mortality rate. Uh, first, we need to uh, standardize our management of pulmonary embolism. I think this is uh, why we are here today uh, and the last week and next week, uh, this uh, three-day webinar. Uh, I think it's, it's very, very useful uh, for all uh, intensivists. Uh, last week, uh, our respectable speakers, uh, Dr. Adel Hussein and Dr. Adel Hamada, uh, really they gave us a huge meal of knowledge about uh, the dilemma of diagnosis, the updated guidelines for uh, pulmonary embolism management. Uh, it was very interesting and enjoyable, and we'll continue this week uh, with our respectable speakers uh, for more details about uh, pulmonary embolism management in ICU, uh, how to take the decision uh, in, your, uh, in the management of your cases, and I think I, I also I am sure to promise that you will find it uh, fruitful and enjoyable with uh, our respectable speakers. Uh, first, uh, let us invite our first speaker. Dr. Hassan al uh, Dr. Hassan, uh, the head of the clinical pharmacy unit, King Abdullah Medical City, Mecca, KSA. Uh, Dr. Hassan was graduated from Faculty of Pharmacy, Fanta University, Egypt. He got a master degree in clinical pharmacy. Also, he holds a board certified critical care pharmacist. Uh, he will lecture us uh, today about uh, the pharmacological tidbits in pulmonary embolism management. Dr. Hassan. Your mic is uh, the mic is you. Excellent, thank you. Okay. It's okay, I can start. Uh, any issue? M yes. You can okay. start, Dr. Hassan. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, I disclose, I don't have any relevant financial or non financial relationship. I don't have anything to disclose. Uh, today, inshallah, we'll, uh, our objective to talk about the logical management and I could be especially in ICU uh, setting. We'll discuss the role and selection of anticoagulation in acute BE. We'll discuss the pharmacology of thrombolytic. We'll discuss the role of thrombolytic in high-risk BE and intermediate risk BE, and to review evidence of thrombolytic uh, benefit and dosing. To we'll discuss the thrombolytic in cardiac arrest due to BE or suspected BE, and discuss therapeutic management of BE in pregnancy. And in, in in the end, we will conclude our presentation. LBE is a common condition in ICU. More than 100,000 cases per year in USA, and clinical presentation varies from no signs and symptoms up to till uh, sudden, sudden death. Uh, as, 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 as we'll say, Majority of the patients as was low risk, uh, about 55% of them, and mortality rate less than 1%. Uh, in, in another group, intermediate low risk and intermediate high risk, it's contribute to 40% of the patient. Uh, low risk, intermediate low risk is 5% mortality, and intermediate high risk up to 15% mortality, and high risk contribute to 5% of the patient with higher mortality, more than 70%. So I'll talk about uh, treatment phases of PE. Uh, PE treatment is consistent of three phases. First, the phase is the initial treatment phase, first weeks, which we will focus on uh, this phase. Sec uh, second is, uh, phase is primary treatment up to three to six months. A third is secondary prevention after three or six months. What's our goal of treatment of PE? We have short-term goals and we have long-term goals. Short -term, the, the, the most important short-term goal is mortality reduction. 
and to reduce the uh, risk of hemodynamic collapse and decompensation and reduce pulmonary hypertension and the RV dysfunction and strain and to reduce the risk of B recurrence and finally to reduce time to thrombus resolution. What about long term? Long term uh, outcome to reduce long term uh, pulmonary hypertension and CTF and to improve functional outcome. So we'll go uh, uh, in the journey for uh, management of uh, BE, acute BE. We'll go through every line of treatment to discuss the rational and the evidence beyond it. So what's the role of anticoagulation in uh, BE? Anticoagulation is current store for all patients in, uh, with BTE unless contraindicated. contraindicated. They prevent thrombus tension and recurrence and allow natural fibrinolysis. It's the only treatment required for the most majority of the patient. Uh, low risk patient, intermediate, uh, low risk patient, and many patients of intermediate high risk can require only uh, uh, anticoagulation alone. So, which anticoagulation we can select? We have parenteral anticoagulation and uh, oral anticoagulation. So, what, what we have to select? For ICU patient, actually, the parental anticoagulation is preferred over uh, oral anticoagulation. Most of these three trials, it's uh, uh, comparing drug with warfarin for VTE or even AF, didn't include ICU patient. The pharmacokinetics profile of drug also uh, accept many issues. Uh, they have long half life, they have uh, uh, but different way of availability, especially in ICU patients with uh, uh, impaired in uh, GI function. Uh, so bioavailability is not uh, be predicted. Reversal also is a, 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 a another issue of uh, drugs or oral anticoagulant. So most of the uh, centers don't have the antidote for uh, drugs, and they are very expensive and the, and not available in. Uh, in each center, uh, concomitant thrombolysis. So, what we, if we would like to give our patient thrombolytic, any evidence support thrombolytic uh, 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 with uh, drugs? Actually, most most trials comparing uh, or uh, investigating uh, thrombolytic just use most of them use unfractionate heparin, and some of them use low molecular weight heparins. Use of uh, drugs. You can find it in a uh, case report and some case areas, but there is no RCT comparing it or including it. So we're going to put the evidence with, with parenteral. So which parenteral? Low molecular weight or heparin? Before low molecular weight, heparin, unfractionated heparin was the gold standard and the only agent used for anticoagulation. After the discovery of low molecular weight, the paradigm shift. The low molecular weight is as effective as uh, and as safe as heparin, uh, uh, IV heparin, was easy to administration, and the predicted uh, bioavailability or predicted uh, pharmacokinetics, and only without any uh, monitoring for most of the patients. So, in a meta analysis of 12 randomized trial, almost to a certain patient, compared to low molecular weight with, with heparin, low molecular weight was associated with non significant lower incidence of recurrent VTE. All cause mortality rates didn't differ between the groups. Major bleeding occurred in 1.4 of low molecular weight heparin and 2.3 of unfractionated heparin recipient, but it was non significant difference. Low molecular weight is preferred in the cancer patient and patients with proximal DVD and in pregnancy. So, bottom line, low molecular weight is at least as effective and safe as unfractionated severity and is much easier to administer and to manage. So, let us discuss the advantage of this advantage of heparin and low molecular weight. For heparin, the first advantage of it is rapid onset and clearance, easily monitored. Renal function, it's, it doesn't require uh, elimination by renal or, uh, or liver. It can be used 
in renal impairment or liver impairment without any adjustment. It's rapid reversal by brutamine and can be used for morbid obesity. But what about this advantage? It's used by IV continuous infusions with workload, with uh, bomb, with line, with uh, nursing uh, workload. It's frequent, it requires frequent monitoring. Lumbar uh, protein uh, anthracite uh, is uh, is cheap, but frequent monitoring makes it the cost because BTT is three or four times per day it cost. Heparin uh, associated with high risk of head more than low molecular weight and also high uh, variability pharmacokinetics. Low molecular weight is advantage. It's typical to It's easy to use. Longer duration of action. Routine monitoring not required in most of the patients and lower risk of head. But what, what about the problem of, uh, of disadvantage? It, it accumulates renal failures and there is no strong evidence to support its use with morbid obese patients and the reversal, it's the reversal is partial. Right. This is the dosing of, uh, this is the example of heparin dosing uh, nanogram. It's uh, our KMC nanogram. And also for long heparin dosing, next one milligram uh, uh, twice daily. For our patient, we can dose one about five milligram per kg, then the barin one seventy five uh, unit per kg. Uh, once daily, delta the barin uh, one hundred per kg every two hour or two hundred per kg every uh, once daily. Uh, Fund is according to body weight. So for whom I can select long local rate, and for whom I will select unfractionated heparin. For patient high risk BE, intermediate high risk BE, and the patient with high risk of bleeding, unfractionated is preferred and is the recommended uh, option. But for patient with in intermediate low risk BE and low risk uh, BE, low molecular weight, even oral anticoagulant can be used. What about American anticoagulation? American anticoagulation recommended in full group of so patients. In patients with, uh, with suspected high risk BE without diagnostic uh, criteria yet. And patients hemodynamically stable with high or intermediate clinical probability of BE while diagnostic uh, workup in the progress. Right. Let us go to thrombolytic and high risk patients. What's the rationale beyond thrombolytic or thrombolysis in acute BE? It reduces mortality in high risk BE. It's pro proven. It's the only group of patients proven to reduce mortality. It's reverse RV dysfunction. It prevents hemodynamic decompensation, reduces thrombus burden, which is not achievable by anticoagulation alone, reduces risk of BE recurrence, and decreases the risk of developing uh, chronic pulmonary hypertension. Pharmacology, it's uh, all, all of us know the, uh, it's pharmacology. It's a clear plasma during the plasma, which, uh, which uh, uh, break the fibrin uh, clot. So, an uh, agent, streptokinase, it's the first agent used in the urokinase. Uh, streptokinase is the pro, it should be loading and over 24 hours. The uh, urokinase for uh, 5400. Over 10 minutes and then for uh, 4,400 units per kg per hour over to, uh, 12 hours. There is accelerated regimen from for serotokinase and neurokinase. They are using 1.5 million over two hours and neurokinase 3 million over two hours, but not every day abroad. Actually, serotokinase and neurokinase now is not available in uh, USA. Uh, Alteplase uh, is the most common agent. And at the time being, it's the only agent approved in, uh, in USA and only available in the US. 100 milligrams for body weight more than 65 over two hours. For patient less than 65, we can use 1.5 milligrams per kg for, for uh, body weight. Uh, some, some, some trial or, or some expert use 10 milligram bonus, then 90 milligrams over two hours. Ready place, uh, 10 unit uh, IV bonus can be repeated twi twice with 30 minutes interval. Connected place, no loading dose, and the dose is according to uh, body weight, from 30 to 50 milligram. Actually, the place and the place are not FDA approved. 
what about contraindication? A major contraindication is structure intracranial disease, brain uh, intracranial hemorrhage, ischemic stroke within three months, recent brain or spinal surgery, recent head trauma or structure or brain injury, bleeding diseases and malignant intracranial neoplasm and suspected out of dissection. For, for related contraindication, for uh, hypertension, recent internal bleeding, recent surgery, recent invasive procedure, ischemic stroke, more than three months, current evacuation, current anticoagulation therapy, traumatic or prolonged uh, CBR, pericarditis or pericardial effusion, diabetic retinopathy, pregnancy age more than 55. We have one case. 39 years female, diabetic history of use oral contraceptive, present to ER with short, sudden shortness of breath, TTPE showed bilateral BE, her map 55 on low dose norepinephrine, heart rate 24, uh, saturation on room air 88, RV to LD uh, ratio 1.4, BMP 520, and troponin 0.65. For this patient, you you would like to thrombolize the uh, hem, hair or not? You can write in the chat, yes or no. No, but right, okay. Let us uh, investigate the evidence of thrombolytic and high risk BE. Uh, Mid analysis of 11 uh, RCT, 748 patients, both intermediate risk and high risk patients. They didn't find a significant difference in mortality between thrombolytic and heparin alone. But when we exclude the patient with uh, trial, exclude patient with major BE and just focus on patient, on, on major BE or massive BE, they find the uh, recurrent. And this there is significant difference in mortality and recurrent uh, uh, BE. Another meta-analysis of four prospective trial of almost one, uh, 1,500. All patients are hemodynamically unstable, so all patients are high-risk BE. All cause mortality, as we say, there is significant difference, and thrombolytic was associated with reduced all cause mortality, and even also associated with uh, reduced BE related mortality with significant effect. So, thrombolytic and high risk BE is associated with early hemodynamic improvement, mortality benefit, and the risk of major bleeding. But in most patients, the mortality benefit outweighs the risk of bleeding. In patient, all guidelines recommend in patients with high risk BE who don't have a high bleeding risk, systemic thrombolytic is recommended. So let us thrombolize our, our patients. Our, according to guideline, our patient is candidate for thrombolytic. They don't have contraindication to thromb thrombolytic. So my friend here, just ask me, Okay, we'll thrombolize it, but which lytic? Which thrombolytic will use it? To answer this question, uh, meta analysis uh, published in uh, Robin jo uh, Hart Journal investigates this issue. They uh, investigate bleeding risk where each uh, uh, thrombolytic they found for alter blades, there is no significant difference in bleeding risk for three to blades. There is significant difference, and significant it's associated with high risk of bleeding, even more than uh, other the, like streptokinase and urokinase. So, for me, if I will uh, thrombolize my patient, I will see now. Also, another one comparing uh, alteblase versus nectoblase for IC, uh, uh, intracerebral hemorrhage, heparin, and heparin was lit. For alteblase, only 0.4%. From 278 patients, only one patient with uh, uh, intercerebral hemorrhage. 
point four and for me you remember it four percent three point six uh, uh compared to four percent but check for three to place for uh ICH point two percent for heparin and two percent of uh click to place almost tenfold uh, for major hummer two point three for heparin alone and eleven percent for heparin with uh connective blaze so now now I, I I know I select my my agent I will use TVA. Okay, let us from price our patient now don't wait. But still, my friend asked some question again. But which dose? We are using full dose or reduced dose or half dose. To answer this question, let us go to the evidence. What's the rationale for reduced dose? Can, we can answer this question. Can lower dose achieve same benefit of higher dose or with lower risk of bleeding? This is a rationale with reduced dose uh, uh, thrombolytic. As we know, more lytic, more bleeding. The goal of lytic therapy is not to normalize the pulmonary pressure, but to cut back pressure sufficiently to prevent sudden cardiac arrest. A moderate reduction in pulmonary pressure may be achievable with a lower dose of thrombolytic than standard dose. This may carry a lower risk of bleeding and improving the overall risk benefit ratio. So one meta analysis uh, investigated five studies, 440 patients, three of which compared low dose uh, lytic with uh, standard dose, and two uh, compared uh, low dose lytic with heparin alone. So what's the problem? The, for, for mortality, there is no uh, difference in mortality and no difference in recurrent PE, but there is a reduction in risk of bleeding. As uh, expected. But in 2018, there's a large trial published in critical care medicines comparing high dose with half dose uh, alteplase. It has a, a retrospective core study, half dose versus full dose alteplase, 420 hospital, 3,758 patients, intermediate risk and high risk, almost 700 in, in half dose and almost 3,000 in full dose group. Reduce the dose in this trial, there is no mortality benefit, no significant difference in major bleeding between half dose and high dose. Treatment escalation was observed in 54% of the half dose compared to 41% of the full dose uh, patients. A second dose of alteplase was administered in 80% of half dose and only 2.5% of full dose patients. Half dose alteplase is associated with increased hospital charge. So, to conclude, treatment with half dose alteplase for high risk BE was associated with more treatment discretion and an increased hospital charge compared with full dose alteplase. So still now, is there is a place for reduced uh, dose in high-risk patient? Yes, there is, maybe. We can consider it in patient with high risk of bleeding or relative contraindication if other modality like surgical blockomy nor uh, customer-directed uh, uh, thrombolysis uh, are not visible. In, low, in patient with low body weight, we can use 1.5 uh, milligram per kg. This, this means the scenario to use it. So it's clear now, we have the agent, we have the dose, let us thrombolize our patient. Still, my friend is hesitating, he's just asking me, okay, but which road? Bolus or infusion? To investigate this issue, most of trial using infusion, alteplase or uh, streptokinase or urokinase, tenectoblase used as bolus. For alteplase, most of trial using uh, infusion, but there's four trial comparing TBA 1.6 milligram bolus over two to 15 minutes versus a standard dose or principal alone in situation not in cardiac arrest. They are small sample size. There is no definite uh, conclusion can be taken from them. No high quality evidence indicating that TBA can safely be administered as low dose bolus for PE outside cardiac arrest situation. 
to how to monitor its thrombolytic. Your thrombolytic uh, catastrophic event can uh, happen. So, what was the most complications of thrombolytic? Where is this major bleeding? So, if there's signs of major bleeding, stop. This is stay controlled bleeding. No reverse, but if refractory bleeding, reverse. For neurological status deterioration of neurological status, sign of ICH, stop. Send your patient if stable to radiology for CT and reverse if you found uh, interferon bleeding. And you did, wow. it's, it's a hidden complication of uh, alteblase. Around one to 5% of patients receiving alteblase develop angioedema. It's, sometimes it's a fatal uh, complications and require intubation or uh, invasive uh, intervention. So what happened? What we can do if uh, angioedema uh, happened? Stop and manage angioedema. How to reverse thrombolytic cryo, uh, uh, cryoprecipitate ten, uh, 10 unit. And also we have to reverse the protamine. So it's, it's, it's easy now to, use, to know why you use heparin, because easily uh, uh, reverse it if uh, any signs of bleeding. Let us talk also about anticoagulation during and the following thrombolytic. Concomitant dose of anticoagulant and thrombolytic increase the risk of bleeding without any benefit. This trial, we'll discuss it later, we'll show the issue with it. First, how the uh, anthracinate heparin before thrombolytic. So what about low molecular weight heparin? It's slow back, it's taken in the morning. What can I do? Okay. Receiving low molecular weight heparin. Not contraindication to use uh, thrombolytic in patient high, high risk BE patient. Uh, don't delay uh, don't delay uh, thrombolytic if indicated because the patient on low local heparin. After thrombolytic infusion is complete, shake bit ABTT and resume anthracinate heparin without loading dose when the BTT is less than twice its uh, upper normal. Uh, if the BTT exceeds the value, repeat it every four hours till uh, normal and start heparin again. If patient uh, demonstrate signs of improvement and stable, low molecular weight heparin can be started after 24 hours. To summarize high risk BE, thrombolytic are recommended for patients without contraindication to thrombolytic as it was associated with reduced mortality, reversal of RV dysfunction, Perfection of hemodynamic decompensation reduces the risk of recurrence. A dose 100 mg over two hours, no strong evidence support denies the reduced dose, nor bolus dose. Alternatives associated with lower risk of bleeding among other thrombolytic. For patients with contraindication to thrombolytic or failed thrombolytic, other modalities like CDT or surgical embolectomy, if an ECMO should be considered by a multidisciplinary team like Verti. Let us go with uh, another issue. As the best way of uh, thrombolytic in a uh, high risk patient is clear. If there is no contraindication, low risk of bleeding, light. But what the problem, the issue now is was intermittent resistance. We'll discuss it now. So We have this patient, 50 years male, diabetic, post lung fly, long flight, present to ER with sudden shortness of breath, CTB showed bilateral over B, started on heparin. On D1, his hemodynamic stable, heart rate 95, saturation 92 in room air, RV to LV 1.1, BMP 320, and thrombin is 0.3. Uh, simplified BE uh, severity index is zero. Would you like to write this patient or not? Yeah. You can write in the chat, yes or no. You would like to write this patient, this patient in category of intermediate high risk patient. He has radiological evidence and uh, myocardial injury by mark.
Next day, patient still hemodynamic stable, heart rate 115, oxygen saturation on face mask 8 liter, 92%, RV LV, there is no new imaging, BMB is 430 and thrombin is 0.0. Simplified BE severity index is 2. Would you like to thrombolize this patient or not? Let us check and see our answer. What is the residual for thrombolytic and in intermediate risk? Girofani in 2000, in 2000 uh, published a study of short term clinical outcome in patients with uh, uh, acute BE with RV dysfunction. He found that 61% of normal tensive patients with acute BE present with RV dysfunction. 10% of them, uh, the, sorry, 10% rate of BE related shock from them, 5% mortality. He found also normal tensive patients without uh, RV dysfunction have a better short uh, term uh, outcome. So, the rational for thrombolytic and uh, intermediate risk, because the severe RV dysfunction is associated with worse prognosis than mild uh, or no uh, RV dysfunction, 10% rate of PA shock, 5% in hospital mortality. So, lytic can reverse RV dysfunction, so it can. Improve, mort uh, improve this mortality, decrease the incidence of shock. But this is uh, theory, but let us check the evidence beyond that. There is six meta analysis in the last uh, 10 years, uh, investigating the thrombolytic agent in uh, 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 intermediate risk BE. There is a uh, YAMA meta analysis. If they found mortality benefit in using of uh, BE, uh, sorry, in uh, thrombolytic and uh, intermediate risk BE, but also with higher risk of intracerebral hemorrhage and higher risk of bleeding. Another meta analysis found also found no mortality benefit and no recurrence, uh, and recurrent BE also, there is no, uh, if, uh, no benefit. The third uh, uh, meta analysis find the mortality benefit with major bleeding, high risk of major bleeding, and recurrent, uh, uh, lower risk of recurrent BE. Another meta analysis found no mortality benefit with major, uh, major bleeding risk high. The last one found no, uh, no, no evidence of improved uh, all cause mortality or stroke or recurrence of BE. And the risk of bleeding is high with thrombolytic and in in intermediate risk patient. All of uh, trials consistent with higher risk of bleeding, but inconsistent with mortality. Three of them find higher, uh, lower mortality or different the mortality, and three of them find no significant mortality benefit. Why, why is this happening? Why is this conclusion from it analysis different? Because most of the uh, trial, uh, 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 meta analysis include heterogeneous study, different definition of intermediate risk BE, different outcome. They include sometimes high risk BE patient, and sometimes include study evaluating uh, custard directed therapy. The absolute magnitude of benefit is small, it needs large number to, uh, to be power enough. Uh, use of the different thrombolytic and different uh, doses also. So, what about? Uh, RCT, did we have RCT comparing? Uh, yeah, we have the largest trial in uh, thrombolytic in BE, beta trial. It's multi center randomized control trial, 106, uh, 1006 patients, the, the largest number for thrombolytic, uh, uh, thrombolytic trials, mean age 70, 13 countries, included patients with confirmed BE and abnormal RV. On, uh, echo or CT and positive troponin. So all patients in the category of intermediate uh, risk patient. The, uh, the, uh, after confirmation of acute BE, absence of hemodynamic collapse after two hours, confirmed RV dysfunction and myocardial injury. All patients received 
unfractionate uh, heparin and uh, randomized to tenectoblase and unfractionate heparin or to placebo to unfractionate heparin. After one day, the patient received unfractionate heparin low local rate or contaminox on seven day primary outcome and 30 days secondary outcome and also free long term uh, follow up. The issue in this trial, they didn't hold the uh, uh, heparin during uh, uh, administration of thrombolytic. They give it com uh, concomitant together. What about the result? Mortality at seven days, there is no significant difference. But hemodynamic compensation at seven days, there is um, uh, 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 decreased rate of hemodynamic uh, decompensation significant with uh, tenective blades. But with major intracranial bleeding, at seven days and extra cranial bleeding and intracellular hemorrhage at seven days. Mortality at 30 days also, there is no significant difference. We can conclude from these trials in patients with intermittent risk VE, thrombolytic was associated with the reduction in hemodynamic decompensation. No difference in seven days, no 30 days mortality, tenfold increase in intracranial hemorrhage, fivefold increase in major hemorrhage. Uh, the investigator of uh, Bezo uh, uh, did follow up uh, uh, for the patient for a uh, medium of 38 months. They didn't find any benefit or the significant difference between all uh, uh, placebo and negative based on all outcome. All cause mortality, there is no significant difference. All cause mortality at two years, no difference. Safety diagnosis. No significant difference. But this clinical symptoms reward by the patient, no difference between groups. Uh, RB dysfunction, no difference between group. But when hypertension, no difference between, between group. So which group of patient was non-high uh, high risk patient might benefit from thrombolytic therapy? Dr. Patient, Hassan, yes? if you please, you have uh, five minutes. Okay, only okay. Patient with clinical sign of deterioration, including signs of shock, tachycardia, worsening gas exchange, RV dysfunction, increased level of cardiac biomarker, while on anticoagulation. This patient can't can or uh, can we can use uh, thrombolytic for them? For reduced thrombolytic, there is two trials, all uh, single trial, uh, small uh, number of patients. They just uh, investigate non clinical outcome, improved vulnerable uh, pressure, but no important outcome like mortality of recurrent of B, uh, BE or hemodynamic improvement. And living trial comparing all, uh, all investigate decreased blood burden on BQ, but there is no clinical uh, outcome. Another, this trial also we discussed it later, this contain, uh, before it, it was contained patient with high risk and, and low risk. We discuss about high risk patient uh, there and here also for for uh, intermediate risk patient, no significant difference in mortality and major bleeding. Uh, treatment escalation was observed in 46 patients, it's higher in the uh, half dose. And to conclude that treatment was half dose, alpha blaze for intermediate risk BE was associated with more treatment escalation and an increase in hospital charge compared to its standard dose. To summarize intermediate risk VE, that are conflicting regarding mortality benefit of thrombolytic. Routine use of thrombolytic and intermediate risk VE is not recommended. Use of thrombolytic and intermediate risk VE is associated with high risk of major bleeding and intracellular hemorrhage. Thrombolytic may be reserved for patients with clinical sign of deterioration. If clinical full dose rather than, if clinically indicated, full dose rather than reduced dose is recommended unless patients at high risk of bleeding. Uh, we'll talk about thrombolytic in BE induced cardiac arrest. Less than 5% of patients with acute BE progress to cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest secondary to BE account for 5 to 13% of a non cardiac arrest per year. Mortality rate of cardiac arrest secondary to BE is 55 up to 95%. What's the evidence with, uh, beyond it? There is no uh, randomized control trial or sort of some, uh, some, uh, small sample size of the original different thrombolytic regimen. Uh, Meta-analysis found that use of thrombolytic was not associated with an increase in survival in hospital, the hospital shelf, but it was associated with increase in hospital admission and risk achievement. 
of course, imposing increased risk of deep. Dosing, uh, bolus, uh, uh, crystal uh, agent at the place, uh, uh, bolus over two minutes, 50 milligram can be rebated if frost not achieved after 15 minutes. Uh, Tinectoblase uh, bolus according to body weight. Once administered, uh, Altiblase or uh, Tinectoblase continues to be hard for 60 to 90 minutes. Being pregnant, CB is a leading cause of maternal death in the USA, contributed to almost 10% of maternal death. The end, uh, BE is four to five times more frequent in pregnant women than in non pregnant uh, ladies. For being pregnant, initial treatment was antraxanthidine or low molecular weight, lighter of which would cause the placenta. Continued treatment uh, was low molecular weight heparin throughout pregnancy, avoid warfarin and uh, DWAC. Braille delivery switch to low molecular weight heparin or discontinue low molecular weight heparin for uh, bland uh, uh, delivery. For thrombotic pregnancy, pregnant patients are excluded from RCT, evidence from case report. A recent systematic review described almost 127 patients, severe and high risk, uh, severe uh, high risk patient and intermediate risk patient. Survival rate was 94 in pregnancy and 88 in postpartum. Major bleeding was 17% during pregnancy and 58% postpartum. Take a message. Anticoagulation is a cornerstone of BE treatment and the only required treatment of majority of BE cases. Anticoagulation selection depends on BE severity and risk for bleeding and the potential for invasive intervention. Decision to thrombolize should be multidisciplinary based, considering risk benefit and available resource. So, melodic was associated with lower mortality and high risk BE. Routine use of thrombolytic and in intermittent risk B is not recommended. No strong evidence support reduced dose of thrombolytic. In B induced uh, cardiac arrest, thrombolytic was associated with increase in hospital admission and risk achievement. Thrombolytic may be considered for pregnant patients with high risk B. Thank you. Any question? Uh, many thanks, Dr. Hassan, for this uh, valuable uh, informative presentation. Uh, summarizing the journey of BE pharmacological management uh, with clear and two target message, really. Uh, and now, uh, if we have any question for Dr. Hassan, 